All right, let's. Uh, <laughs> oh man. Uh, let's let's do the the, the last story that I want to cover, and it's a uh, Tulsi Gabbard story. It's Tulsi time, people. Haven't done a haven't done a Tulsi Gabbard story in a little bit. Um, but uh, Tulsi wrote a, uh, an opinion piece for The Hill recently uh, where she talks about um, calling out the U- U- U.S. intelligence communities f- uh, for uh, election interference. And, uh, and it's, a very, it's an important piece. Uh, she, it's a well-written piece. Uh, I, I really enjoyed what she had to say. Um, and it starts with her talking about uh, you know, the, the claims that Bernie's campaign is being hacked by Russia or, or whatever the fuck they're talking about now. Um, and uh, Wa- Washington Post, WAPO, apparently, uh, said that uh, Russia is trying to trick people into, into criticizing the establishment candidates. These, these candidates are so perfect that you can't, you can't criticize them unless you're tricked into it by, by the evil, mean... Russians who are who are force feeding you vodka and then saying that Joe Biden is a, is also a racist like Michael Bloomberg and and saying that Amy Klobuchar is also a racist for putting an innocent black kid in prison for life for a crime he didn't commit where she didn't have enough evidence to actually put him in prison for and then and then Mayor Pete also does not care about black people in America because he fucked over a lot of poor. Uh, primarily black people in South Bend, Indiana. Nobody in South Bend, Indiana likes them. And, uh, and, and uh, for saying that Mayor Pete is a, is a CIA plant that is a blank slate, that'll basically do whatever these intelligence community comes in, uh, tells them to do. And, and, and that, that's the Russians are saying that. There's, don't, don't go out and do your research about these candidates to discover the truth of these things. Just listen to what the Democratic establishment is telling you and not the Russians. The Russians want you to think for yourselves. And we want to tell you what you need to think. That's my summary of the uh, Washington Post right there. But, uh, but there's no evidence, right? There's no evidence to back this shit up. Uh, there's no evidence that the Bernie campaign is has any sort of link to to Russia. I'm sure they're like, buddy went to St. Petersburg once. Ah, uh, why? That's probably he probably got compromised. He 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 said he liked the churches. Fuck off. <laughs> there's no evidence of it at all. There's no information from the intelligence community. Uh, just these sort of vague accusations, right? Where's the proof? I mean, if you're going to make these big, large claims uh, that that Russia's here and they're infiltrating our election system, they're infiltrating our candidates, where's the proof of it? And they're like, yeah, but no, don't do that, though, because that, because asking for proof is a Russian trick. That's what it is. Russian, it's, it, proof was invented in the, in, in, in the heart of... This, the cold, snowy mountains of Russia in a gulag underground where they created this thing called proof and not just listen to what the Democratic Party says because we're so nice. Fucking <laughs> they don't. So, uh, Tulsi talks about you know, strengthening our election integrity. And she put out something called Securing America's Election Act. It's like a very straightforward name for a bill, you know? Like, <laughs> it's just, it's just, there's, no, there's no one way, like, you're, okay, cool. Like, what's that bill about? Oh, it's about securing America's election because that's exactly what it fucking says. Great, why don't we name other bills like this? You know, like, we had like SOPA, PIPA, and CISPA, and it was just like, what are these bills? What what are we what are, what are we making what are we making these bills out to be? And uh, and it's like no one knows. It's the counterintelligence security measures philosophy act. What the fuck are you talking? About? Securing America's election act. 
pretty straightforward. Uh, pr pr primarily, what it does is uh, it, it, it wants uh, voter. She wants uh, to put out um, voter verified paper ballots uh, to prevent hacking. There you go. Use use a use an accountability measure to if 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 this is really a big deal, right? If the big fear of the intelligence community is that Russia and all these other countries they're coming in, they're hacking the elections. They're they're kicking Democrats right in their genitals. They're just they're just slamming them right in their genitals. You know, that's what they're doing. They're punching democracy in the face by hacking the elections. Uh, should we do something about it? Should we strengthen our our, our the, the 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 way that uh, the, the way democracy is 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 utilized uh, in this country? Maybe maybe push for for better access for. Uh, uh, maybe push for a candidate that people are actually fucking excited about and not try to uh, use a bunch of McCarthyism to, uh, to, to, to smear the, 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 the man and, or the woman and, uh, you know, and uh, use paper ballots, use, use, use systems of accountability. I don't know, just spitballing some thoughts here, folks. Just trying to plant some motherfucking seeds. Why would you be against something like this? Like uh, literally a bill that is securing America's election. If the intelligence community and a bunch of people are like, no, we don't want to be. Oh, so you don't want to secure America's election? <laughs> you want you want America's election to be very hackable? Why? Oh, because you want to hack it. Oh, because the Democrats want to hack it. Because the Republicans want to hack it. With, with with fucking interstate cross check with all your fucking schemes and your games you you want to be able to let lobbyists control what you do and skew the results just a little by oh I got you I get it I got it cool so Tulsi also goes on to say that uh, calling Americans uh, that that criticize this system that criticize establishment candidates, as uh, hostile foreign agents is unexpected, uh, unacceptable, and disgraceful. So she uses, I mean, she like slams some like that's some heavy wording too. I love it. It's fucking great. Unacceptable and disgraceful. That's what you are. These people are exercising their right, uh, not just the free speech, but to petition the government. We are allowed to do this. You are stomping on those rights by making these false claims. I love it. It's fucking awesome. You know? So, uh, Tulsi Gabbard has called for all candidates uh, to renounce McCarthyism. Um, because she basically is like, this is what's going to happen with Bernie. You gotta you gotta renounce this McCarthyism because it's heading us into a dangerous path. Then it is heading us into a dangerous path. I've done a bunch of videos on how this McCarthyism bullshit is heading us down a very dangerous path. And uh, you know, she says she she talks about what's going to happen uh, to or what or what she believes is going to possibly happen uh, to Bernie Sanders within within this campaign with with all this McCarthyism bullshit that's coming out against him. Right? Uh, is uh, uh, you, you, you have uh, he's going to be falsely targeting Bernie uh, and he, he, that's what they're doing right they're going to try to stop his campaign by falsely tarnishing him um, and you know and then the other thing is if he wins it's going to force him to engage in this really false anti-Russia narrative that the only thing it does is is it, uh, uh, it, it gets us closer to possibly being in some sort of um physical conflict with with Russia right now it's just a, a conflict of, of words and uh, you know d d putting dicks on the table uh, you know this dick measuring contest that we have uh, with Russia and uh, uh, it's going to escalate that is what she is what she says uh, which you know I'm, I'm hoping that's not where it goes that's that's the hope anyways I don't want the conflict to escalate. I don't want it to. I, I you know, this, this, this anti-Russian narrative 
um, seems to be very dangerous. And, uh, and you know, and, and again, this is not an endorsement of what's going on over there, what the what the State Department is doing uh, over there. It's just saying that, hey, I, you know, maybe this is great. Maybe this is the right thing to do. Maybe this is the way we, we, we talk to foreign leaders is create this level of xenophobia uh, where, where now they get to use their propaganda machine to create, you know, anti-American shit. So even if we come in and we try to have a political discourse, uh, it's it's not going to work because because the citizens are being fed this propaganda that, that we hate them, that we don't, that we, we think that they, they're dumb and they're evil. It's very dangerous, I think. You know, um, Professor, uh, fuck, what is, his, what is his name? Stephen Foster, I think. He's, he's been on Air Mate show a bunch, and uh, I, w- I watch him quite a bit, uh, and, I, and I, I like what, a lot of what he has to say. Dude's a wealth of information about uh, Russian relations and all that. Highly recommend uh, you guys go check him out. Uh, but, you know, he kind of brings up this point of, like, this xenophobia is not good. Um, it's just not good. Now, the other thing she points out is, regardless of what happens, I think the Democratic nominee, she believes that the Democratic nominee will be baited into into this anti-Russia rhetoric and then increase the military budget for that, for those reasons specifically. Right, the Pentagon already has like seven hundred some odd billion dollars, and you know if we get closer, if that if that clock gets closer to midnight, uh, if that doomsday clock gets closer to midnight, we're 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 going to increase the military budget. Uh, the Pentagon is going to get ask ask for more money and all that sort of all that sort of jazz. So again, dangerous. I think it's a very dangerous thing to do. Uh, I don't think we need to increase our military budget. Uh, and more, more than that, too, one of the other things she points out, too, is, it, you know, this McCarthyism and, and Russia baiting and all this other stuff is, um, it's really counterproductive because that's all we talk about. That's all the narrative becomes. It's all what, what corporate media ends up talking about is Russia, 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 McCarthyism, McCarthyism, McCarthyism. Uh, who's an agent? Who's an agent? Oh, is this person an agent? Are they an agent? your neighbor an agent? Oh, God. Hurry. Save them. Save them by putting a, a Biden yard sign or a Buttigieg 2020 yard sign. Save them. You gotta save these people. She points out that that's what Trump did, you know, and 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 uh, especially with somebody like Trump, uh, it's it's kind of it's kind of not good and dangerous and, and, and kind of scary because he spent uh, a lot of his presidency kind of fighting back against uh, these anti-Russian narratives, and that he wasn't a Russian puppet. So he 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 decided to be a strong man himself by escalating tensions with with Russia, escalating tensions for war. You saw what he did in, in with with uh, uh, Iran. Um, you know, these are not good things. You're, you're, and, and the Democrats, I mean, are doing this and they're, and they're kind of playing into his ego, right? They, they, and that's what they kind of did is like, they're like, oh, you're a Putin puppet. You're not even thinking for yourself. You're just, you're just Putin's bitch. That's what you are. And that gets into somebody that, you know, has this, the psychology that Trump has of, of, of needing to be the strong man, of needing to be the, the, the big tough guy in the room that, you know, is like, I can, I can take everybody down right now. I can do it. I'll do it. Oil me up. Oil me up and I'll take everybody down. So they played into that. You know, and that's that's what the narrative became. Every every decision he made was just like, how is this benefiting Russia? And, you know, we missed the point of what's going on. We, we, we don't focus on, on the right things. The only critique I have of, of Tulsi's article... Um, is that she doesn't really mention that the the Mueller report proved Russiagate wrong. It, it, it debunked Russiagate. Uh, Aaron Mate wrote a great article in The Nation that I reference quite often uh, where he breaks it down and points out how the Mueller report really proves that everything that was happening with Russiagate was falsified. Everything that was happening with it um, was... Uh, was proven to be proven to be false. Um, to you know, uh, 
that that uh, they they really didn't have um, they really didn't have a case at all to prove that the Trump administration was uh, was being controlled or influenced by by Russia. So this McCarthy is bullshit that we're running is is just is just take it's just like it's just like the next level of what McCarthyism was going to become. Uh, but I do think this is a very important piece that she's written though. Um, and right now, she's the only candidate that is calling out something like this. It's calling out the McCarthyism within the Democratic Party. Um, that that is that is making the claim that look, if you want uh, if you want this country to move forward, if you want people to come together, uh, if you want uh, less less divide and more discourse, then then McCarthyism is not the direction you go with it. It's a bad idea. It's going to create more issues than, than it's going to solve. She's the only candidate doing that. Everybody else, uh, I mean, even Bernie kind of falls into the trap of, uh, you know, talking about the Russiagate stuff. Uh, or, or not talking about it specifically, but kind of playing into it a little bit. You know, uh, even Andrew Yang did it. Even Andrew Yang went down the Russiagate line. Um, and that was kind of upsetting and disappointing to watch. But she's the only one that kind of pushes back against the narrative. Um, and, you know, they tried to do this to her in October of 2019, if you remember. They tried to do this to Tulsi Gabbard, and they failed. It did not work. They weren't able to make it stick. And immediately after that, immediately after that, she was present in one debate, and then the DNC pretty much blacklisted her from everything else. So she wasn't on the debates for the mainstream media, right? And that's where most of the country gets, unfortunately, gets their news from, you know? That's why it's important... For, for alternative media to get more shares and more like spreading it around, sending it to people and being like, hey, this is an alternative like thought that you can you can listen to and, and see if you will, you know, like if this makes sense to you or anything like that's that's what we need more of this country, because a lot of people are too many. I think too many people are probably getting their news uh, from corporate mainstream media. So when CNN and MSNBC uh, blackout someone like Tulsi Gabbard, these sort of voices don't get heard as much. Her anti-war voice doesn't get heard as much. Her anti-McCarthyist voice doesn't get heard as much. And they're specifically making that happen. They don't want these voices to be heard. Um, so this is sort of active censorship uh, that, that, that we're seeing and, and, we, and we have a candidate kind of speaking out against um, against that level of active censorship, so which I think is great. That's why I like her. It's one of the reasons I like her. Hey, everybody! Uh, thank you so much for checking out this video. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, give it a share. Make sure you are uh, subscribed to all of my pages so that you get updates when these videos come out. Uh, the, the road reflections. Uh, come out kind of sporadically. Uh, the dispatches come out every single Friday. And uh, when Forkful of Noodles uh, is released, they will be released on Mondays. Uh, so uh, make sure you're, you're, you're subscribed to the channel because I do put out uh, a good bit of content. Uh, if you enjoy the topics that I discuss in any of these videos, you will probably enjoy my live stand-up comedy because I talk a lot about these sort of topics in my live stand-up comedy. And I am right now on tour. I'm on tour right now, you guys. Uh, I'm on the road heading across the country, uh, getting ready to record my next hour, politely angry. Uh, but I have tour dates coming up in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, Biloxi, Mississippi, Memphis, Tennessee, St. Louis, Missouri, Des Moines, Iowa. We added Des Moines, Iowa to the tour. Uh, Moline, Illinois, Chicago, Illinois, Indianapolis, Indiana. And then I'm going to be recording my album March 20th in Washington, D.C., March 21st in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Uh, and then April 2nd through the 4th in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for the Pittsburgh Fringe Festival. Uh, you can grab all of your tickets on my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, make sure you snag those tickets, RSVP to those events, and come hang out with me. Come check out uh, my live shows. Uh, another cool thing is I'm also going to be opening for Lee Camp 
on his book release tour. And Lee is going to be coming all across the country. Uh, I, I have the honor and pleasure of opening for him. Uh, and uh, we are going to be in Flagstaff, Arizona, Tucson, Arizona, Asheville, North Carolina, Greensboro, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, Burlington, Vermont, Montreal, Quebec, Ottawa, Ontario, Columbus, Ohio, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Cleveland, Ohio, Toronto, Ontario, and we're adding a bunch more dates uh, as we speak. Uh, you can go to Lee's website, leecamp.com slash schedule, and if you purchase VIP tickets right now, you will get a copy of Lee's book and a souvenir USB of his DVD uh, for free with the purchase of a VIP ticket. Uh, so get, grab your tickets. What's everybody waiting for? You don't want to miss Lee Camp when he comes to your shows. Super fucking awesome uh, to catch his shows. So make sure you are uh, doing that. And another way to uh, help and support sh- uh, shows like this, sh- independent media, uh, is, is very, very much dependent on uh, uh, people's support. Uh, if you have the ability to financially support uh, this show, you totally can. Uh, a couple different ways you can do that. Uh, one is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, you can go to, that we- go, go to the website, check out the, the details, uh, what kind of rewards you get, what kind of uh, goals you are helping achieve, um, and, uh, and, and you get uh, exclusive access to uh, you know, unheard tracks. Uh, once or twice a month you get unheard tracks. Uh, that aren't available on any album, storytelling material, uh, and some of the uh, some of the higher tiers also get free tickets to my live stand-up comedy shows, and uh, and and uh, uh, audio to longer sets as well. Uh, but another way is by becoming uh, a sustaining member over on my Bandcamp at ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. Uh, starting at five bucks a month, you get exclusive unreleased collection of stand-up comedy and storytelling material. Uh, and if, if neither of those really appeal to you and you want, you want to make direct contributions directly to this show, go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com, and you'll see uh, these big orange buttons. These big orange buttons uh, are, are, are ways that you can directly could become a sustaining member right on my website. That helps, uh, it, it, you know, increase and improve the quality of uh, this show, Forkful of Noodles, Taboo Table Talk, and The Dispatch. Uh, that, uh, that those are all the all, all the shows that I release uh, pretty frequently, and it helps DIY independent stand up comedy. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you guys so much for uh, for, for for getting all the way to the end of these videos. I very much appreciate uh, everybody that, that that watches, shares, likes all this stuff. Uh, the the returning uh, viewers, the the new viewers, the the people that have already become sustaining members, every you guys are fucking uh, awesome. Uh, I love you guys, and uh, till next time, we will see you on the road. Bye, everyone. <laughs>